People always ask me, how do you win in fantasy basketball? And I tell them the same thing every year. You got to put in the work. It's not just showing up for your draft. It's actually mock drafting and then analyzing data and content. In this episode, we are going to do just that. We believe every NBA fan that plays fantasy football should also play fantasy basketball. Now, don't worry about it. I know what you're thinking. Oh, my God, another video about fantasy basketball. I've seen it all. I know it all. I don't need this. I'm telling you, this is different. I'm Robin Marks. My background, I've worked with NBC Sports Roto World. I've also been a contributor at Hashtag Basketball. I am about this fantasy basketball life, but specifically for points leagues. Oh baby, the love of my life when it comes to fantasy sports. So if you're out there looking, digging, searching, and just can't find any points league content, you are in the right place. Before we dig into that, I want to quickly talk to you about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season, from baseball, golf, soccer, right to all the top fights in UFC, MMA, and boxing. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker, or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Use promo code BELIEVE for your 50% free Bet credit on your first deposit up to $250. Bet online. The game starts here. So what I want to do is talk about a mock draft that we conducted this week. We had actually 12 teams in the mock draft, like humans. There was no AI, no uh, chat GPT, no Gemini, no Claude, you know what I'm saying? No Sora. It wasn't any of that. No open AI, no meta. It was like Humans, humanoids actually drafting with me. So big shout out to the entire Believe in Fantasy community that pulled up for that draft. But what I want to do is unpack the first five rounds. I want to take a look at some things that kind of just made my fantasy senses tingle a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like I was like, wait a minute, that that that's a little, that's a little interesting. Come on, man. So you know we gotta dig in. So let's talk about the first round. First round, a big thing that stood out to me was Joel Embiid went fifth. So I think this is like people are tired, even though on paper he was one of the top fantasy basketball players for points leagues last season. He wasn't healthy when you needed him, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's where some of that concern comes from. Another thing that stood out to me in the first round is Giannis Antetokounmpo actually went fourth, which I think was a little early for him considering some of the other players that were on the board. For me, I would rather have a SGA even in a points league there. But Giannis going fourth, it says to me that in points leagues, he's still very much a first-round player, so I'm really interested to see how that develops as the draft season continues, or the mock draft season continues, I should say. The next one was DeMontis Sabonis. DeMontis Sabonis in this draft went eighth. What? Like eighth. Top 10 for points leagues. And you know what? It's not a sexy name. It's like Sabonis, right? Where it's like, you say a name like, you know, Luka Doncic, like people are excited about that. Sabonis, not so much, but the numbers don't lie. Your man is a double, double machine, even a triple double machine. So with that being said, for me, Sabonis going eight, I'm not like caught off guard by it. It's just something that I'm having to get accustomed to now that Sabonis for points leagues can be considered a top 10 player at least at this stage of the mock drafting season and the last note from the first round Jalen Brunson went in the top 10 y'all yo when I when you think about it yo he averaged like 28 points last season what like really so although the name doesn't have like that household name value like a LeBron James, Steph Curry. The numbers don't lie. And your man took the top off. <laughs> Boobies is out, hair blowing in the wind, 
Bing Bong convertible at the Garden. Your man was cooking last season with the hottest of grease. So, for me, uh, I did an expert draft. I'm in an ex expert draft right now, Dynasty Startup, and I took him with the 11th pick, but I got skipped because I, I missed that part of the draft, whatever. And now I'm feeling a little better about it. I think he's about 28 years old. So for Dynasty, maybe he's not as solid as uh, of a play. But for redraft leagues, I, th I think this is okay. Like at the time, if you go back and look at the actual draft, I was kind of like, what? what are you doing? Like that's bold. But it, it's justified considering his output. Let me know in the comments. Do you think that, Russ, uh, that Jalen Brunson is a first round player next up let's go to the second round now in the second round there was only one big thing that stood out to me that Alperin Shengun went in the second round at the top of the second round which is huge he had a major leap last season and the way I'm looking at him in 12 team points leagues that he could be someone that you grab at the back end of the first maybe even at the top of the second like he went here so I was already thinking it but once you kind of see it in practice in real life it's very very interesting so he did end the season a little banged up, so he was injured towards the end of the season. So that is a slight concern, but he's still a young guy. Puts up tons and tons of numbers. I call him the baby joker. And there is an abundance of wings and guards in Houston. And he is, in my opinion, the best prospect they have, the best young uh, emerging star that they have on their team. And I think that he will be a fantasy staple for years to come. Third round. Now, this was kind of like, I felt like it was the retirement home stages. It was like, you know, when you have people who've been in the game for a long time and then it's finally like, hey, man, you might need to hang it up. You know what I'm saying? This is this is not it for you anymore. And this was kind of my awakening. When you, If you play fantasy basketball long enough, you'll see your favorite star's finally get dethroned, and finally come down to earth. They will become mortal. They all do. You can't be, you know, 2005 LeBron James forever, right? You can't be, you know, 2010 Steph Curry forever. Like, it all comes to an end at some point. So let's talk about it. Third round, the first thing is that Steph Curry went in the third round, which I don't think I've ever seen that in any mock draft. So I thought maybe second round, but the fact that Steph Curry went in the third round, how the mighty have fallen. I will, I will, I would like to add that with Klay Thompson leaving town, there is going to be tons of opportunity for Steph to go off. So I, me personally, I would be okay with taking Steph in the second round, um, but I'm not mad at people who don't, have faith and think that he's going to constantly decline, which he will, but he's still going to be super value and valuable. And Clay's departure will, in fact, I believe, increase his value just a little bit from um, at least for three pointers from where it was last year. The next one that is heading to the retirement home, James Harden. James Harden goes in the third round, y'all. Like, I'm like, what in the heck? Like, I don't give a shit, Sue Puppy. James Harden in the third round, maybe the top of the third, but I think he was like at the bottom of the third. Listen, I do believe that James Harden was one of the best fantasy basketball players that we've ever seen, ever. When he was in Houston, amazing. And he slowly declined. But this year, with the departure of Paul George, this is not the time to give up on the beard. If anything, this is this might be the year that you reach for the beard. So there's some folks that went in that third round that I would have definitely picked James Harden before them. So for me, I'm not out on James Harden yet. I do believe he will have uh, a bit more usage. He'll have more minutes with Paul George out of the pictures. And also, Kawhi Leonard is always banged up. So if he's banged up, what do you think is going to happen? We might very well get Houston Rockets, Frohawk, triple step back James Harden. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He might spin the block. I'm just saying. 
Um, so that was my third round. Oh, I got one more third rounder. And LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball went at the back of the third round. People are giving up on LaMelo, not because of skills, just because of availability. So that could, in, in the fantasy world, especially in points leagues, could lead to some value. If you see him hanging around in that third round area, that's a player I am confident in taking with a third round pick. A guy who was considered a first rounder just a year or two ago, definitely somebody that I would be open to grabbing earlier than the third round. Next, for the fourth rounders, a couple of players uh, that came that came up that I wanted to talk about. Bam Adebayo, another one who's falling, right? So Bam was considered a second round player, third round player a few years ago. Now he's in that fourth in that fourth round territory in a points league. Definitely somebody I still have faith in. Not sure what's going to happen with Jimmy Butler. If in fact Jimmy Butler is moved or he continues to regress at the pace that he has regressed. Bam Adebayo could take on a whole lot more, and I believe that he will continue to be a defensive force. He will continue to chip in with some assists, grab rebounds, and if his points increase, if he can increase his scoring a little bit, he could definitely um, get you into that second, third round territory in a 12-team in a 12-team points league. So for me, I'm not out on Bam Adebayo. He's um, one of my favorite players. I'm not as high on him as I once was. He is not quite dumpster juice, hot dog water. He's not. He's more like like garlic bread, like rip, like nice fragrance, but really high on um, cholesterol and calories. I don't know why I said that, but I, I did, and I and I own and I own that. Next up from the fourth round. Carl Anthony Towns, a player who continues to plummet down draft boards every single year. This was this guy was a top three fantasy basketball player just a few years ago. For Dynasty, one of the top five fantasy basketball players just a few years removed from top five excellence. And now, dwelling in the fourth round. Now, I get it. With the ascension of Anthony Edwards. This is not the same Carl Anthony Towns. With the arrival of Rudy Gobert a few years ago, this is not the same Carl Anthony Towns. However, he's still Carl Anthony Towns. Come on, man. Your man can hit the threes, right? Like, I'm not going to hold you. Does he lack some grit, maybe? Like, he's on the record saying some wild stuff. I think he was on podcast P's. Uh, Paul George uh, podcast talking about like he's the best shooting big man in history. Like he he might have some emotional intelligence issues, right? Things that he can work through. But in terms of sheer talent, he's a gifted basketball player. So for me, if he's available in the third, I'll be okay with reaching for him. Speaking of Paul George, the last player I want to talk about is Podcast P himself. He also went in the fourth round, which was surprising to me. People are saying because he is going to be in an offense with Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid that there might not be as much opportunity for him. I'm assuming that Paul George, for the first time in his career, becoming a third option, a legitimate third option, is only going to help to improve his efficiency, but also make sure that when he does get the rock, it's going to matter just a little bit more. So I think his efficiency will increase. Um, I also think, although his usage and you know shots might decrease a bit, I think his efficiency will balance out his fantasy game. So will he average what he averaged last season? I don't think so. But I think in other areas where he's going to be called upon to do other things that maybe he didn't have to do in L.A., now you're going to see the fantasy points come from those categories. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what he does as a third option. I'm a big time Paul George supporter. I, I love what he's doing in media, but also I'm excited to see him have a change of scenery and hopefully, you know, have a chance of winning a title. So I really love what um, what's happening there. Now let's close it out with the fifth round. Biggest thing for the fifth, the biggest things for the fifth round, uh, Jalen Duran goes in the fifth round. This guy is going to be a force. In Dynasty, reach for him. If he's, listen, reach for him in Dynasty. In Redraft, I would also reach for him. I would go, I would go back in the fourth round to grab Jalen Duran at this point. Like, he is going to be a force for years to come. Next up, Kyle Kuzma goes in the fifth. That's 
a little early for me. I'm just out on Kuzma. I don't really care for his fantasy game, his real life game, his haircuts, whatever it is. Just not one of my favorite players. So I was kind of like, what? And then Austin Reeves went in the fifth round. I think we might have been getting trolled there. I'm not. I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Is that a thing? Are people drafting Austin Reeves in the fifth round? Porzingis goes in the fifth, which I think is a steal. I would definitely reach for him. And also Jaron Jackson Jr goes in the fifth round which is insane to me which like for me I am definitely going to reach for him even in a points league although he's a little more valuable for category leagues I still think there's tons of value for him in a points league so for me I'm pumped about it I'm excited about it and if you guys want to watch that entire draft check out the episode right here this episode has been presented to you by bet online